Hi everyone. Welcome to episode 102 of Kooks on Kooks. I am Jess and this is Mary and we are back after another split week. So that means one win, one loss, a win in overtime again, um, and then a loss at San Diego. Bummer. Yes, so. total bummer. We, of course, will get to that more in coaching from the couch later, but we'll start with our quote of the week. It's from Vince Lombardi. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Uh, just really thinking about that will to win <clears throat> after last week with this upcoming week and the tournament coming up. So uh, you got to have it in uh, late February in order to play in March. You got to have that will to win, right? I, d- I think we've seen it. We, we know we can have it. Yeah. We, we'll definitely need it this week. <laughs> and then other times. Games. Yeah, for sure. Huge games. Um, so let's go into our first segment, which is going to be hashtag BYU Valentine's. <laughs> oh, so we had so much fun. It was so much fun having our Twitter blow up all day on Valentine's Day with those BYU Valentine's. Um, you know, you see all sorts of teams, Utah Jazz were doing it, Mm -hmm. um, other collegiate basketball teams, and it's just fun to, to be part of that action. And we had some really, really good ones. So thank you to you guys for making those all day. So we wanted to share some of our favorites and we did run this as a contest. Mm -hmm. Um, so we chose three people to win just some kind of random prizes we have hanging around. So we'll start with some of our favorites and let you know who won. So we're going to start with um, this one from <laughs> at Kukesfan44, which is um, Big E, Eric. He's at Eric BYU fan, 1994, you'll see him, but his handle We've is had him on the Kukesfan show before. 44. So great. And his was, you're tearing up my heart when I'm with you, which is obviously an NSYNC reference. And it's Coach Rose yelling at the WCC refs, which I think we talked about that picture last week. We um, did. We did. That's where he got the idea. And uh, I perfect. love the lyric pairing with it. It's so great. Hilarious. Good one. Um, we loved this one from Jessica B at YFangirl underscore JB. It's Taysom, and she's got a double pun in here. So uh, extra points to her. She said, I'd tackle anyone for you to be on my special team, Valentine. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one from Tasha Savy. I would row, row, row my boat anywhere to get to you, Valentine, with Peyton Dasher doing the row your boat. Classic. Thing. Yeah, that's a good one. We love our Peyton ones. Um, she also had this one uh, with Bo Hodge that said, will you be my beau, Valentine? Ha, Get it. ha, ha, ha. And <laughs> what, she had the other one that uh, you're the, the only one for me. And, oh, you know, yeah, just that one was good too. Yoli puns, you know we're on board. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, Brett Barr sent us a bunch. And this is one of our favorites. Uh, my heart rate is much faster when I'm with you, Valentine, with the picture of Shay Collinsworth. So Very good. Good one, very creative. We got a ton of amazing ones from Callie. It was really, really hard to pick just one from her. Um, But this one from TJ. Hey, girl, I may be skinny, but my love for you is thick. Amazing. Outstanding. (laughs) Oh, so funny. (laughs) Um, Russell also sent us some good one. And he used a gift, too, which is bonus points for that. Um, Hey, I'm Diane. Diane to meet you. Name pun. We love the name puns. So good. Perfect with Diane. Uh, the Go last on. one we wanted to share, we always get one of our favorite participants in hashtag BYU Valentine's is Pat Hawes, and he tweeted us a picture of this year's team, and the Valentine is, just win the freaking tournament. And as we oh, tweeted him back goodness. from our account, he really is just the pinnacle of romance. He really is. I mean, that's all we really want. Amen. So uh, now more than ever, but uh, so fun to do those Valentines. So what three did we pick as our winners? So first winner is going to be Russell for his Diane, awesome Diane. Very good. A Valentine. And we then... also went with Tasha. Um, she sent us so many good ones. Uh, we are happy to have taken a portion of her work day away from her, and we think <laughs> Sorry, it was Tasha. totally worth it. it was. <laughs> and of course, the last one had to go to Callie. She had some amazing ones. Go back through our hashtag, BYU Valentine's, yeah, and please. check out. Yeah, please. Yep. That ones. will bring you joy throughout the year. So, so thanks, everyone. Can't wait till next year. Time for Coaching from the Couch. We talked about it. We had a split week, which is definitely not what we were expecting. Um, so, overtime win versus Pepperdine, 75 to 70. Um, really great that we ended up winning, um, not what we thought was going to happen. Lost to San Diego. 
13 points, and I'm pretty sure Vanquish the Foe brought up that we lost by 13 points at the Jenny Craig Pavilion last year as well. So, unlucky 13. I don't know what it is about some of these WCC gyms that just... Yeah, should we bring up the fact that <laughs> Pepperdine was an overtime win and they're 1 and, what, 14 in conference? One and 15 or something And disgusting. have only won four games all yeah. year and they almost... And should we bring up the fact us. that that would not have been the first one conference win team that we would have lost to? Oh, yeah. So, glad anyway, we glad we did it. Um, and it would have been the fifth year in a row. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But we won, so I guess we won't complain too much about that. Before but... we get into our what went wrong and what went right, we did want to address tournament seeding a little bit because it is just about that time of year. Um, mm-hmm. And our position is not set in stone. Uh, and there's no one really to blame for that but ourselves. If we had won at least two of those bottom dweller games that we lost and we're very comfortably in third place if not competing for second right but alas what is the case instead so right now BYU can either be a three four or five seed in that tournament kind of depends on what happens in the next week yeah I would like to say that we will likely be the third seed but I am not confident are you I'm not confident to win yeah in Portland on Thursday yep absolutely. and then USF would also have to win at Pacific if that happens, seat. then we almost for sure have the three seed locked down. To be honest, though, I don't know which one of those seeds would be better for the tournament. Because I don't either. Kind Is of there either one way. that would be safe for us? No. No. <laughs> have no, we not already of proved that safe. we can lose to anyone anytime? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're looking at playing USF, San Diego. Mm, no, thank you. No, thank I you. Mean, yeah. Hard pass. Yeah. I mean, when you almost lose to Pepperdine, like, and they're the very bottom of the conference, mm-hmm. you should be a little nervous about whatever seed you are. Like, I don't yeah. think a three seed is really going to significantly help no, us. No, I mean, yeah, we'll definitely say the higher the seed, the better. Um, but as it stands right now, today on um, Tuesday, Pacific is only one game back. They have nine wins. Um, we have ten. And then you've got three teams that are two games back, and uh, a lot can happen this week. So just to kind of put that on your radar, and uh, I guess everyone cross your fingers that we can pull off that third seed. Or <sighs> Anyway, uh, let's talk about what went wrong in those uh, the win and the loss. What went wrong for you, Coach Tyler? Um, we got killed on the boards at San Diego. <laughs> it was ugly and terrible and frustrating and at the end it was 24 we had 24 rebounds they had 37 and that's a big difference and it's hard to win games and keep them close on the road if you cannot compete on the boards for sure so that is a struggle we also were out rebounded by pepperdine only by four in that case but yeah yeah either way that's that's well, two that road games the reason we ended up in the situation that we were in sure. so speaking of rebounding mine actually has to do with that as well Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> this is from Wes Holly. He said, crucial stat from the game. This is the San Diego game. Worthington, Nixon, and Dastrup combined for two rebounds. Oh, and two. Peyton played just a couple minutes in that game, and he had one of the two. So um, um, I hate to name names, but I'm looking at you, Luke and Dalton. Can we grab those boards? To be fair, Yoli only had four. Our leading rebounder was Elijah Ooh, Bryant. Oh, is that seven. fair? It's all awful. Yeah. So <laughs> your guards were your leading rebounders. Elijah was seven and TJ with five. Which is like, that's good. They should be getting rebounds. But what are those big guys in the game to do, you know? Not shoot threes, probably. <laughs> Not shoot threes. So there you go, Coach <laughs> Tyler and Coach Blanchard are what went wrong oh, working in tandem. Goodness. I did also want to mention, just after watching that San Diego game and how frustrating it was, um, I'm not going to blame the refs because there was plenty that we could have done aside from bad officiating, but I would like to say that I think that if there was any sort of rhythm at all in that game, and it was bad in the first half, it was worse in the second half, I think we win because I think, I don't know, I think we play better when we, who doesn't play better when there's not whistles every two seconds, but, uh, that game did seem to take forever. It was, it was one of those that felt unwatchable. You know what I mean? Oh, it definitely And I, I, it I think it put us at a disadvantage. <laughs> it was so bad. It did. Also, disadvantage is shooting 13% from three. Oh, yeah, we that was that total. game. We didn't mention that, but it was really, really bad. Goes without saying, right? So it's really hard to win any game, I think, when you only make three threes or shoot 
three of 22. So. Oh, it's, oh my gosh. Oh, makes me, okay. That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> so let's see, did we come up with any what one rides, Coach Tyler? Um, I did. So we've harped on the last couple of weeks about turnovers and points off of turnovers, which have, has been very oh, bad. it's been bad. And then we went into San Diego and had only four turnovers that whole game. Wish we had something to show for it. Like, how on earth? Four turnovers. You've limited yeah. that so far, yeah. and you still got I think destroyed. that's where the refs come into play, though, too. Because if you're playing a normal, clean game, and we only managed to have four turnovers, then we're in a lot better shape. But four turnovers and five billion whistles, and you're back to square <laughs> one, right? Yeah, I mean, we did only shoot. Let's see. We shot four. 21 free throws in that game, and they shot 32. So that's 11 quite more. a big difference. Yeah, there, yeah it, four turnovers. Oh, I guess I, we well, had five. Okay, take it back. We had five turnovers total. Okay, I'll Still, take five turnovers compared low. to what we've been doing. And 10 assists. So you doubled up your assist yeah. to turnover ratio, which is nice. But There you go. That's some silver lining. Uh, yeah. For me, literally the only thing I could came up come up with between watching these games, looking at the box scores, the team stats. Honestly, Pepperdine beat us in most stat categories. So my what went right is just that we did not lose the Pepperdine game because I think that's an improvement for this team. We did lose the LMU game, and I know it was disappointing to come off of that win that should have been a lot better and then just go and lose anyway. But, you know, I take heart in that. We could have got swept last week, and, and we didn't. So, like I said, like we said in the notable quotable, looking for that will to win. And we did have it in that game. <laughs> so, that's yeah. the that's the best spin I could Thank put on it. Goodness. No, I mean, that's <laughs> some weeks that is good enough that you didn't lose to Pepperdine <laughs> for the fifth year in a row in that crappy gym. For us, at least. Yes. Uh, all right. So, talk of the town. Pretty short this week because not a lot is going on. Yeah, um, everyone was quiet over Valentine's Day weekend, huh? Surprisingly, except for Payne Dashwood. Uh-huh. So Thursday, he just says no words, and this must be a picture of his girlfriend, we're assuming. Valentine? Valentine, Speaking girlfriend. of cute things and Peyton, I think he also got a puppy. So yeah, he's this, keeping us busy. Does that have a name? Luna. Oh, yeah, Luna. It's so cute. Very cute. Black Adorable. Lab or something. Uh, this is from Bet Save LKL which is probably not at all how you announce that. Mm, um, remember, Brandon Davies is playing over in Lithuania. They tweeted, congrats on the SIL King Mindogis Cup. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry our, to, you know, our million <laughs> Lithuanian fans out there. But uh, yeah, so it looks, here's him and his baby and his wife, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's their version of All-Star Weekend. It must um, be, and it looks like an MVP trophy or something. Yeah, and it's in honor of the first king of Lithuania. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if Look it's for MVP, confetti. but... Uh, we don't speak whatever <laughs> language that is. So we did this try is to is Google it, guess. but we like the picture. <laughs> it is Kay? cute. He made it his profile picture. There you go. Which is super He cute. did. Um, and then also, speaking of former players... Keeping up with the games. Um, this is from Coach Tim Lacombe. Congrats to former Cougar great Noah Hartsock on being named Conference Coach of the Year. This is in Las Vegas where yeah. he coaches. Great person, great player, great teammate, great coach. Good to see him getting that experience and getting those accolades, right? Yeah, I miss having him as a grad grad assistant. But it's good that he moved on, got a good job, and he's killing it down there. Speaking of coaching jobs, can I just throw out there really quick? I don't know if we talked... We did talk about, I think, last week, Marty Wilson getting let go I wouldn't mind if we found a spot for him on our staff yeah that was definitely my thought during the Pepperdine game was <laughs> can we hire Marty Wilson to yeah. fix this yeah <laughs> Gosh. fix the way we play against teams like his because yeah he would definitely have the inside track on that right yeah and I think even coach Rose just said they they've got us figured out I mean he just knows how to coach against us so so I don't know if that's a long shot but I'd like to see it why not um, okay, so that is what we've got. Like we said, very short talk of the town. Maybe some more stuff will happen this week. Uh, but as for what's next, we've got Ryland Bergerson. Uh, there's only, if this isn't the last Rose show, then there might just be one more after. Yeah, that's Do they do true. on the week of the tournament? Mm, I don't know. I don't think they usually do because they usually head out early. But So this might be very well be the last Rose show. We've got Ryland Bergerson, yeah. Mr. Sonic, as we like to call him. 
uh, freshman phenom. So he'll be there. That's at 6 p.m. tonight, BYU TV. Uh, they will be serving pizza mm-hmm. after the yeah. show. So go check it out. If you haven't been this season, uh, it's now's the cool. time. It's a very nice setup. So check that out. As for games... A uh, late game on Thursday mm. at Portland, 9 p.m., and this will be on ESPNU, so that's 9 p.m. Mountain. Hopefully um, we'll fare better on that road trip than we did last week oh in gosh. either game. Uh, and then, of course, we've got our home finale. Luckily, it is not senior night. Like, it's really weird that it's our last home game and it's not seniors. senior night. So, BYU versus, oh, I don't know, Gonzaga, number, they're tied for number six in the AP poll, so kind of a big deal. They're kind of uh, good. Yeah, they're all right. Nice. But, you know, what? we gave them a game last time, and uh, I I hope we can do it again this week. You never know with this team. But anyway, that's at 6 p.m. on Saturday, Marriott Center. Wear white. Show up. Let it be a sellout. Um, that game will be on ESPN2 if you cannot make it. As for our sponsors this week, our first sponsor is Jake Welch. We had to show him some love because I especially gave him a hard time oh, during the game. He is known, at least between me and Steve, as our bad luck charm. He goes to all these Pepperdine games and we just lose. So his tweet says, I am redeemed. Four years of misery in Malibu. Love the alliteration. And finally, I can go home and rest my sweet bald head upon my pillow knowing that we have finally vanquished my immortal enemy, Willie the Wave. Worst, creepy, Terrifying <laughs> picture of the wave. Uh, but sure, Jake, we'll just pretend for all intents and purposes that the curse is broken. Uh, shout out to you. And also sponsored by the year 1991, which was the last time that BRU basketball played back-to-back overtime games. It's been a while. I it's was not time. born yet oh my gosh (laughs) so uh, yeah was it good or bad (laughs) who's to say but there's a fun fact for you may you always stay loyal to the white and blue for Jess I'm Mary we'll see you next week